In this series of videos, I'm going to teach you how to add Google in-app purchase to your Android applications. So what is in-app purchase? Have you played those games where you are stuck in a level and then you notice a promotion telling you that you can have five extra lives or a pack of gems for just one dollar? This is in-app purchase. Like this app, a word game that I'm so addicted to. So you can click on this one and go to the shop and you see that you can buy a bunch of stuff like this, a pack of 240 coins or something for a dollar and 29 cents. That is in app purchase. To be honest with you, the app that I'm gonna teach you the in-app purchase with is not that fancy. I just want to teach you the concepts and implementation details and then you can apply them to any Android project you're gonna have. In these videos, I'm gonna cover everything from starting the billing process to handling the purchases, acknowledging the purchases, query the purchases a user had to make sure that they do not have to pay for the same product twice. So stay with me till the end of this video and the rest of the videos in this series to learn everything. I created a new project in Android Studio and I, I called it an app tool and I want to add the billing capability to this project. The first thing you need to do is to go to Gradle scripts and then build Gradle, the second one, pertaining to the module app and not to the project one. And add this line to the dependencies. Implementation, Android, and billing, and the version is 2.0.3 or any newer versions. And then, you have to click on sync now and wait for it to be finished then you need to go to your manifest file and add this line this permission to your project the permission for vending dot billing before you can add the billing capability to your app your app should be published in google play store in alpha beta or production so first of all that should be published then you can go to your store presence for the app and then in app products you have manage products and subscriptions in manage products you can have one-time products like consumable or unconsumable ones like lives or pack of coins in a in a game and subscriptions is for weekly monthly or annual subscriptions for this video i'm going to use managed products click on this button create managed product this product id is so important this is the SKU or the ID that we're going to use in our applications. So be careful, it should be unique. So I call it my coins, for example. And then the title coins, description, a pack of coins for one dollar and then it should be active and then I'm gonna click on add a price and since I'm in Canada the default currency for me is Canadian dollar it, it can be anything so I can say one dollar for this product and then you can have the exchange rate in other countries you can see that, for example, the same price in Austria is 0.79 
euro and then you can say yeah everything is okay so apply the local prices and then you can click on save and you are good to go the only thing that is important to me right now is this id that i'm going to use in my application let's go back to android studio and then start coding the actual the actual code so the main activity and i'm gonna def i'm gonna define something called billing client and then billing client yeah this is the one that i'm gonna need then i'm gonna need uh, an array list to store the list of skus because i might have several skus several products for this project i'm gonna use just one but still i need an array then i define a global variable called sku to store the id of the product that i'm gonna use because i'm gonna use this sku all over my activity then i return to my console in google play and copy this id to be used in my code and then paste it here the first thing that i'm gonna do in uncreate after set content view is to add the skus to the sku list since in this project i only have one so i just add it like this you can add as many skus as you want like this like another etc okay and then i'm gonna create a function or method called setup billing client and then actually i want to create it okay and i'm gonna do everything in this method your activity has to implement purchase updated purchase updated listener and then you have to implement the methods like this implement methods yeah on purchases updated and the error is gone then i go to my setup billing client and paste this line of code i'm going to create an instance of the billing client so i write that new builder and the context is this enable pending purchases i want to enable pending purchases and then set listener to this and, and then dot build then i have to start connection so we'll start connection and it accepts a parameter of type billing client state listener billing client state listener then this is overridden on billing setup finished and on billing service disconnected in this on billing service disconnected you have to have your try policy to try connecting again to the billing client in unbilling setup finished i'm gonna check for if the billing result that get response code equals billing client that billing response code dot okay so everything is okay so i can start writing some code here there are a, a bunch of other options here like billing unavailable or item not owned or item unavailable or error but for now i'm going to check for okay to make sure that everything is okay so if everything is okay i want to start loading all skus so for this one i'm going to create that method inside main activity and not as an anonymous instead of billing client 
okay here I want to check for billing client being ready is ready so do something else write something to the client like this toast the billing client is not ready please wait for example in the next video i'm gonna complete this part of load all skus and continue adding the in-app capability to our app so stay with me till the end of this series